If you're looking for a detailed review of Bookshark's pre-K curriculum, then this video is for you. We've just finished up the year, and so I would like to review with you uh, the curriculum in its entirety, show you what's included, and share with you what we liked about it and what we didn't. Hi, my name is Rochelle Garrison Cocomelo, and let's talk pre-K. So first I wanna share with you a little bit about Bookshark itself and why we chose it. So Bookshark is a literature-based program, meaning that they use predominantly books, literary fiction, nonfiction, biographies, illustrated books, to provide an engaging education, uh, one that moves past memorizing textbooks or repetitive worksheets. Uh, this really sits well with me, that's why we chose it, and from all of the research that's been surfacing, reading aloud to your kids is one of the very best things you can do to help with their pre-reading skills. So Bookshark is also a box curriculum, which means um, you can purchase an entire box of curriculum and theoretically not need to supplement with any other subjects. And Bookshark's philosophy is to create a love of learning and do, and that they believe is the basis to a successful education. And I really believe that, so that's one of the reasons that we chose this curriculum as well. They also implement a four-day curriculum over 36 weeks. Now, just because it's a four-day curriculum, don't think that means that they're cutting um, quality, they're just cutting time. So they often say actually that they offer more in their four-day curriculum than other curriculums offer in five. And for me to have that fifth day off, uh, we can plan activities and that's really, really useful. And so last fall we had Kayo in a weekday soccer group and then over the winter and spring uh, we participated in forest school where you got a lot of extra, extra outdoor time and extra learning uh, with a bunch of kids of different ages. Bookshark is also proven academically. So Bookshark is the secular version of Sunlight. Sunlight is S-O-N, Sunlight. And Sunlight is a famous Christian curriculum that has been around for 30 years. So Sunlight homeschooling students, on average, score significantly higher on college entrance exams than students who've attended public or private school, which is very interesting. Now, Bookshark uses the exact same methodology and structure as Sunlight because they're sister companies, um, just without the Bible subjects or the religious um, undertones and references. So I really trust them. They've been around 30 years. They've been around long enough to see the fruition of their students from beginning to end and see the success through that. So this is not a new curriculum that's being tested on your child. This is one that's proven academically. Now that all being said, Bookshark's philosophy at the pre-K level is a gentle introduction to teaching. So they believe at this age, ages four to five, that kids just need uh, really good books, time with the parent, and ample time to play. So their lessons are densely uh, rich, but very short. So lessons were about 20 to 40 minutes, and most of that, probably 80% of that, was me reading to the kids. Now, we would do that at lunch. That's what worked for us. The kids would sit and eat. I would read to them. And then the other uh, sort of table work subjects, so math and some workbooks, would maybe take about 10 minutes a day. So now let's have a look at what's included with this curriculum. Okay, so let's start with the instructor's guide. This is worth its weight in gold. So this is where you have all of your daily and weekly schedule laid out for you. And um, it just, I'll show you what that looks like up close. So basically you have your four day a week schedule. Now that doesn't have to be Monday to Thursday. You can do it however you like. And then it has a broken down into sections, what books you read. You can see some books are all week. Some books are twice a week. Um, and then we also have the readiness skills as a workbook. And they also include uh, some math activities and a song. So for example, uh, let's say, okay, City Through Time, we're going to read these pages, but you go to the back and on day one, City in Time, uh, City Through Time, sorry, now they have a little bit of instruction, so maybe just some prompts, so, so discussions to um, read or to talk about after you, you read, so you ask a question of what functions occur in the town hall and just start that discussion with your preschooler and that helps um, with some memory recall as well as just making sure that they understood the story. So you have that throughout um, your daily, daily and weekly schedules, which is super useful. Um, around week, I believe it's 11, you start doing in math, which I will show you shortly. And also what's really nice is um, they include a song. So what we did, so a lot of the songs we knew, if you're happy and you know it, we would watch it on YouTube and then they would buy it from iTunes and put it on the iPod. So every time we were in the car, we were listening to these songs and just learning along with it. And the kids love that. 
Now you'll notice in here too, we also have, so sometimes there's optional activities um, you can see throughout here, which is nice little extras. We would do them sometimes, you don't have to, that's why they're optional, which is really nice. So for example, after we read about families, we would we'll come back over here to day two and we have this optional uh, families activities. You basically just get crayons, paper, and after reading about it, your child, have your children draw a picture of their family on chalk or a sidewalk. So the optional activities are almost always with things you have lying around the house. Very simple. You don't have to go out and become a crafting um, guru to be able to do them. So I really appreciated that as well. Also, there's one other part of this book I wanted to show you. At the back, uh, they have a couple areas like check off lists where you can gauge where your child is at developmentally. And I think that's just really nice. They keep it pretty basic. So approximately preschool to kindergarten. I haven't even checked all these off yet. Um, but just like, can they jump so high? Can they hop a total of five feet? Um, can they catch a ball with two hands and so on and so on. And then they have approximately first grade just to see where they're at. They also have practical life skills you can check off and then they include field trip planning if you want at the back. Um, they're also when you're completed too, there's a little certificate of completion which is really cute if that would interest your kid then that's a nice little thing to present them. Okay, so these are the geography and culture books and I won't go through every single one, but there's a couple that I wanted to show you. Uh, the first one is Then and Now. This is a really cute side-by-side -side example of this is what a street looked like back then and this is what it looks like now. Plus there's some questions to prompt your child and get some conversation going, so it's sort of some seek and find. And it just goes through different situations and it gives them an idea of history and that concept of like past and present, which is sometimes difficult for kids to grasp. So then there's a book on feelings, uh, some Richard Scarry books, which my son absolutely adores. Um, things people do. Uh, there's also a people book. This is pretty cool. Just has a really good look at how we're all different. Like there's even just a half a page on all the different shapes and colors of noses. Um, there's different hairstyles and it talks about how uh, people do different things for fun and we all um, have different kind of games that we like or different foods that we eat and so on and so on. So this is a really nice kind of look at a bigger picture and getting used to kids or getting kids used to a multicultural perspective. This is really cool. I love this book, though I do find this book a bit old. So I'm happy to have it in our library, but um, I'm going to show you what I mean um, by, by why I think it's old. So it's, it's a street through time. So really cool concept. So they start with the street and they essentially show it what, what the street would look like throughout the ages. So we have the stone age, first farmers, it's the same street, how they've progressed. Um, it goes into the iron age. We have the invaders, Viking raiders. I mean, it goes all the way up until, you know, 1800s and present day. So it's very, very cool and cool to see the changes. Um, however, it is a little bit violent um, and graphic. Now look at here in medieval town, this is a little guy hanging and there's a little cutout of it here too. So um, now this will just depend on what you feel is appropriate for your child, what you think they can handle from an emotional perspective as well. Uh, my son is highly sensitive, so this um, is a bit too heavy for him. He didn't notice this, we grazed through it, but this page when the plague strikes in the 1500s was, I very lightly touched on it because it was too heavy for him and it bothered him. And I mean, they even have like a plague pit where they were burying bodies. Um, I mean, I do feel that this is, you know, violence in a historical context, which is they're going to learn at some point, but at what point is going to be up to you. And for me and, and my son, I, I skipped lightly on, I, I treaded lightly on some of those heavier pages. So just something to be aware of. So here is a city through time. It's sort of the same idea, but from a city perspective. And then uh, there's also a beautiful National Geographic World Atlas. And I uh, just wanted to show you one thing in here. Now, um, Every, it goes through all the continents and all the countries, but the United States and Canada uh, get a zoomed in look of the provinces and the states. And I'm from Canada, so I appreciated that they had some equal weight on the Canadian side, so I didn't have to source that separately. 
So these are all the read aloud books that come with the pre-K curriculum. Um, Usborne really likes to make sure that they include stories from all over the world so that your child doesn't hear only a uniquely Western, you know, perspective. So I think that's really, really cool. My kids love this book. Um, it was really fun because there's a little map. So, you know, I would say, okay, well, we live about here and today we're going to hear a story from Persia, which is all the way over there. And then we would read the accompanying story. So a uh, really, really cool book. Uh, this was just a book full of some classic stories. This is another folktale book, again, for a nice worldly perspective on stories. This is a nice introduction to poetry. And then we had a Mother Goose Club book as well. Um, this one was full of the famous and a lot of not so famous nursery rhymes. Uh, my kids loved it. I did not think that they would enjoy this. Some of these, these are really old fairy tales. Some of them so a lot, or sorry, um, nursery rhymes. So a lot of them were even in like old English and these and thys, but it held their attention. And I think it's because there was just enough illustration. Um, sometimes it was, you could tell that this is, you know, a bit of an older book too, because some of the contents like, oh, there's a man punching a woman in the eye, you know, some things are definitely less politically correct now than they were at the time that things were written. So just something to be aware of. Uh, but that was, that's all the mother goose rhyming. And did you know that, um, kids need to learn how to rhyme before they can learn how to read? So it's really good for them to hear, uh, rhymes. And then the last up we have, these are uh, the other read alouds that are included and you move on to chapter books. And so they include Winnie the Pooh and Babe the Pig, which my kids really got a kick out of. So starting in week 10, you dive into teaching your kids uh, language arts and you do that through these two books. Um, with Dr. Zeus's ABC book, you basically focus on one letter a week. And uh, when I first saw that, I thought, oh, I don't know if that's gonna be enough um, instruction for my four-year-old. I would have thought maybe there would have been some more um, alphabet focus, but I'll share with you in a moment why they don't do that. So uh, the next book was First Thousand Words, and this is just a fun little book where it's basically a seek and find book. So rocks, and then they find the rocks. So my kids got a really big kick out of out of these two books. Now we'll move on to science. These are really cute books, a couple of Usborn books that uh, get kids interested in the world around them. Why do tigers have stripes? What's under the sea? And this one I loved, my kids love, the big books of science and nature. It starts off with everything from, you know, weather to what, um, season it is and then you even go into animals insects mammals and all the way even into machines and uh, simple machines and levers and even a science fair right at the end i 100 percent recommend this even if you're not homeschooling or planning on homeschooling there's a lot of rhyming in here too so it's really easy for your kids uh, to listen to so next up is readiness skills and uh, bookshark includes these four uh, books there's one two three and four and they're sequence workbooks and basically, um, they help you help you and your child basically discover fundamental perception skills. These are the skills, motor, visual, auditory, and comprehension. Basically, if your child does not have these four skills, they will struggle with reading and writing, um, especially once they hit, you know, the eight or 10 year um, mark. Um, so it's important to lay these foundation of skills first before you go on into letter work. That's essentially what they're working on here. And what's cool about these books, so this is included in the, obviously this is the pre-K program with Bookshark, but in other curriculums, they include it at a kindergarten level. So it just kind of shows you Bookshark, I feel, uh, is a bit more academic, um, but also, that being said, if your child struggles with these, don't feel bad if you put them on pause or wait a year because they do start them early here. So um, I'm going to just quickly go over why these are important. Some are really obvious, like motor skills. Obviously, they need the fine motor skills to be able to write. And they actually say that a lot of the problem is the delayed dominance of hand. And that was the very much the case with my son, which I don't think... I would have known was as much of an issue or a block for him if I didn't have these books. Um, and not that that means there's anything wrong with them. We just worked on that more. And I really credit these books to highlighting that for me. So they just talk about how um, if it goes unnoticed, it can even be a factor in learning disability. So it just will impairs, impairs them from being able to write properly. Um, visual skills is really interesting. It's not how well you see, it's your child's ability to interpret and understand the information. So what they say is, 
Practice through studying letters and beginning reading is not the correct way to teach these skills. Very, very interesting. So basically, you don't want your child to memorize a letter because uh, if they just learn to memorize what's going to happen once they hit, hit the age of eight or so and vocabulary becomes much more vast, well, the English language is just too big to memorize everything and they're really going to struggle. So you need to teach them how to interpret and understand uh, and see differences and similarities. So um, instead of memorizing a small, a lowercase b or, or a lowercase d, they're actually uh, being able to interpret the difference. And there's actually a difference between those two things. So um, there's also auditory, which is really interesting because they said um, a lot of times if kids can't translate speech sound into meaning, they're going to have a lot of problems and they'll often be scolded for being inattentive, but they actually just are having problems with auditory memory, remembering what you're saying. So you, this is, I mean, this is amazing when you think about all of the problems you can uh, omit by just having a really good basis of these skills and then there's also comprehension so just being able to categorize and generalize and sequence sequentialize <laughs> um what you see so it all all makes sense i'm going to just give you some samples so it starts off really really basic this is motor skills left to right so you have to take the bunny to the carrot without um, passing the line and they consider 75 to 80 percent target goal is means your child can do it. So as long as they got two of them right, Kyle got three, then that was successful. Um, it moves on into, this is a really cool one. So this is auditory. And what I had to do here, so first you want to make sure that they can differentiate between different sounds. So I would, behind a box, I would make two sounds, maybe like, and then, you know, something different like that, whatever. And then if they were the same, Kaya would have to circle a smiley face. If they were different, he'd have to circle a frowning face and we would go through there. And then again, he got, like he got five. So as long as he'd got more than four, it was considered to be a tar the target goal was met, which means he understood it. So really cool activities. They start with that and then they move on into rhyming. So you can see how the patterns of um, what they're doing increases. Now at the back, what happens is you keep, there's a little um, scorecard. How, so if they got the target goal or higher, you put an X. Uh, if they missed it, you put a zero. And they stress here, which I really appreciate, do um do not refer to this as any type of failure stress that this shows that they're still learning so this is just for you as a parent to determine what is my kid um what is he doing that he understands and what does he or she needs more help with so you can see for us uh there's mostly x's there's a couple one-offs but some of them look at my hand eye look at kyle's hand eye zero 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 so this alerted me to, okay, we have something that we need to work on here. Now that doesn't mean that again, that there's something wrong with them. It just means we had an issue and Kyle definitely struggled with dominance and proper grip. So we started this, he liked it about halfway through to the end of this book, completely frustrated. So we paused and we just said, okay, we're gonna take a break. Uh, I knew that he needed more work in that area specifically. So I went out and I just got a cheapy notebook and then from Pinterest and the internet, I just downloaded and printed for free all these extra left right activities because this was especially his struggle. So just practice, practice, practice. Plus we did some more um, fine motor skill work, just more coloring, painting, working on that grip. Um, and then we came back to it when he was more ready and now he's absolutely gobbling these up. So we've almost completed these. This is all we have left to do. We completed the reading a while ago and I wanted to show you an example of how far we've gone or he's gone. So this is, they're not supposed to leave the lines and they have, uh, they're allowed to leave it so many times, but there is what he was doing. Right, and you can see that he he was off of his line a lot, right? And now we have this is the next. This is what he's he's just did this past week. Now, what a difference! Yes, he he missed off a couple of times, but this was start to finish. He did it quite fast. This is very long when you look at it and how much you have to go. He did it quite fast. The only time he 
he moved as as he did miss a row here. He, missed, he went off three times on a row here, which he's not supposed to do. Uh, but his sister made a noise, so I don't actually credit that to being as much of a skill problem as just a distraction problem. But look at the difference in motor skill work. And this time he used his proper hand and proper grip before he was doing this grip. And this is the full um, proper grip. So that I think that's a fantastic growth. And it was very, very cool to see. Um, now with these books too, there was a couple other things. For the most part, I love them and I didn't think I would like them because they seemed workbooky to me. But when you read how much development um, it's doing, it's so not only is it giving them a skill set, but it's also just alerting you to if you need to work on any extra areas with your um, child. Now there was just one other thing I wanted to show you. Something, some things I need, I think need to be updated. Now one of them is um, the use of a gun, which I feel, you know, shocked me for, I don't think that's appropriate in children's um, activity book. And another, um, I think they just need to update some of their graphics. For example, on this page, it says comprehension and sequence. So you had to color by color, choose which came first, next, and then last. And in this top row, the blocks, I feel like there is no clear indication. There's no clear pattern of which one should be first, next, and last. So I just marked it right because I was like, well, this is ridiculous. I don't even know which one it is. So I just think there's a couple graphics that need updating. But besides that, I am totally a convert, which uh, these are not just filler worksheets. So these are a developmental learning to tool and I'm really happy with it. Last but not least for what's included in the kit is this is the math manipulatives that um, came with everything and we have flashcards and there's these fun little building like blocks, uh, some teddy bears, some little squares, a ruler and a time clock. And the math was really, really light. Um, it let me know, I think, I feel that Kyle's actually advanced in math. This was really, really easy for him, but it gave me a spot to gauge with, and he really enjoyed it, especially this hands-on building stuff. He would have to make patterns or sort into piles and do counting. So the math was very light, I found, um, for my child, but really, really fun. Okay, so let's talk pros of this curriculum, or what I feel are pros. So number one, I 100% believe in their philosophy. Um, they've also been around for 30 years. They have high academic standards, but they start off gently at this level, which I think is really important at the same time. Um, there's seriously no prep to this curriculum. It's truly open and go. I would just open, and within five minutes, I would have our whole day ready to go. I wasn't spending Sunday nights stressing out on lesson plans or anything like that. Um, I also think that it's an age appropriate length of time, like on a day to day basis, uh, the 20 to 40 minutes is totally reasonable for this age and not asking too much, but getting them used to that, you know, formal academics in a gentle way. Also, my kids were engaged the entire time. And this is something I wasn't expecting, especially for some of the books, which maybe I didn't find particularly interesting, or I thought might be too old for them. I still found they were engaged. And this was for, for my son, Kaya. We did this within the last year he was four. He just turned five. So he was four. And at the time my daughter was two and she just turned three. And even her at that age, two, two and a half to three, she was engaged as well. So she's getting the benefits of this curriculum as well as my preschooler. So Bookshark is all is structured, but it's also relaxed. So they give you everything. They lay out all your daily plans. I'm a person that likes to tick boxes. So I'm happy to have that uh, instructor's guides ready for me. But at the same time, they encourage you to go at your own pace. And I think this is really important because kids, uh, their developmental growth until the age of eight, very significantly. So basically Bookshark says, here's a rich education, educational platform. Here's a daily schedule laid out for you, but do it at your own pace um, if you like as you need. And you can also add on or um, extras if you want. So they had an option that I could add on handwriting without tears, a writing program in the, in the pre-K level that's usually included with the kindergarten. So if you felt your pre-K your pre k -er was ready for that, you could add that. They had also had uh, the option to add a, love, a grade level above readers. So if your child is starting to read already, you could add those readers into this program, uh, into the pre-K program as well. So even though it's a box curriculum, there's tons of options to meet the needs of your kids. I love that. So moving on to cons, I wish it had been a bit more unit-y sometimes, like in a unit studies way, where maybe if we were learning about machines and levers and wedges and things like that, that there might have been um, more activities that would match that. 
However, Pinterest is at our fingertips, right? So uh, it was very easy uh, on, upon occasion. I would go over to Pinterest, find a matching activity that worked with what we were learning about um, and go that way. So even though it wasn't included and I sometimes wish it would, was um, in other ways, it was just as easy to go to Pinterest and find what I needed and I could base it around what my kids needed. So if you, for example, have a child that needs to move, then find a supplemental activity that has them moving. Or if you have a child that loves art will find a supplemental activity that involves painting or drawing or what have you. Another con is that I sometimes found the content was too old. Now this will vary depending on your family's values, depending at where your child's at. For my son, he's highly sensitive. So from the emotional aspect, even though I felt like he could maybe understand things intellectually, emotionally, from an emotional aspect, sometimes I felt it was too much for him. But that will just, like I said, completely um, be based upon where you're at with your family, but just something to be aware of. Another con is that I didn't like every single book. I didn't love every book. But the, the practical side of me realizes that that would be impossible for a company to do to find this magical, perfect curriculum for every single person out there. It doesn't work that way. So unless you're prepared and willing to make your own curriculum, be prepared that there might be some books that you don't absolutely love. And the last con is price. Now this pre-K program was $314. I believe that's an American price plus shipping. If you are in the lower 48 states, I believe if you purchase a, a full curriculum, you get free shipping. I'm in Canada, so I had to pay shipping on top of that. And I know it's by weight. Um, I believe I paid about $30 for this one and it was one large box. The older grade have bigger boxes so you're gonna uh, and more content um, so you're gonna pay more shipping it comes via FedEx and it came in two days so this $314 it is a little bit of a ooh, that's a lot of money but when you think about it that includes 21 books plus all the extras so though it's a con um, if you are on a really tight budget I realize that that's gonna fall into the con category I think value wise it's a pro never once did I say man I didn't get my money's worth I feel like I got more than my money's worth overall what did we think of the bookshark pre-k curriculum well we loved it it was actually a really good fit for my son and I and this was our first year homeschooling we just finished it up and we wanted to sort of test the waters to see if one I would be able to do it and two to if it would work well for my son and it really has so if you're a new homeschooler or maybe you're uh, someone who's thinking about homeschooling and you want to test the water so to speak or maybe you're a mom with a four-year-old who just wants to implement some educa educational activities at home before your child goes off to kindergarten then I would highly recommend this curriculum now um, that being said could you go out and buy all of these books yourself or source them from a library and make your own schedule absolutely you could but that would be a very big time commitment. Um, or you could, you know, get your own books, choose your own books and uh, make your own schedule from there as well. But even with that, um, how do you know which books to pick? You'd have to go through a lot of books to filter which ones would work. And even then, how would you know that those ones would be age appropriate in subject or in vocabulary? To me, that's just too much work. So Bookshark um, has been a really good fit for us. Plus, I'm a mom of two and now I'm taking on a teaching role. I just needed an open and go guide uh, with rich books and subjects to teach from a source that I trust trust. So Bookshark really took away that worry of am I teaching enough? And we loved it so much that we ordered Bookshark's Level K program for kindergarten. So on a more personal note, uh, my family and I were trying to live a, a rich life slowly. Now the rich is not a nod to anything monetary, though I will not resist any wealth if it should come my way, but more in terms of living a quality life at a slower pace. And I feel like Bookshark fits in perfectly with our family mantra, so to speak. So I can spend more time um, teaching and learning uh, with my kids um, and less time with stressful prep preparation. And because the lessons are really dense uh, and short, I have less time, it's less chaos and busyness time. So now we have, they have ample time for free play, for music, for arts, and for sports. If you have any questions, um, please feel free to leave them in the comments. And if you found anything valuable, feel free to like, or share this video or even subscribe. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for watching.